So you train people all you train people all over the world. You yeah. lived here in Venice, California for a long time. You trained people at Gold's Gym. You were the manager of Gold's Gym, right? Yep. Yeah, from uh I got there, I started training there in ninety, but I took over in ninety two. So ninety two to ninety seven to ninety eight. And the then team. you, uh, I guess, say like maybe you got popular in the beginning from a lot of the EAS stuff. Originally. Well, that, uh, but, but yeah, that's how I left Gold's. I still maintain Gold's actually gave me this a great gig as a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So I've been technically the spokesperson from '92 till present yeah. day. Yeah. So which is pretty wild. But uh, yeah, I left in '98 uh, to work with Bill Phillips in EAS full time. Yeah. Which was Who have you worked with uh, training wise? I know you train a lot of celebrities and stuff. Oh boy. Uh, I mean, I, I had so many cool projects. I was on Fight Club with Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. That's cool. probably the number one. That's you know, I mean, everyone can relate to that because that was the physique everyone wanted at the that's time. The greatest movie. Yeah, it is the greatest that movie. Movie's fucking awesome. And it was intense. I mean, David Fincher is a, he's an intense director, yeah. and he would fuck with people. Like back then, I was um, I had just a whole hydrate, hydration station. Edward's character, if you, when you watch the movie, he has a breakdown psychologically. He doesn't know who he is, what he wants to do. So his whole premise was. He's like, Mike, I'm just going to eat. I want to look like Iggy Pop. I want my. I said, but you have to eat. I mean, there's lines. He's like, no. So like three days, he didn't eat. So he's on set, and he just forgot his lines. And Finch is like, what the fuck's wrong with you? He's like, fuck you. I mean, they, this, yeah. this, they, I mean they, they were coming to blows. So I'm like, all right. The movie know. comes off that way. Oh, totally, it's yeah. So you modified his diet so much that it was so, I mean, just minimal uh, calories throughout the day. But he, but he retained memory so he could do his lines. But Fincher would do things, like I was I had my girlfriend at the time and I'd be setting things up and he would do things just to get people on edge. So we'd send no guys over just to hit on my girl in front of me. You know what I mean? Because I'm, uh, like a lot of cast, you know, I mean, Brad Pitt, he's a big, you know, he's ripped, but there was no one like really huge and impressive, but not right. like I'm the biggest fucking guy there, but, uh, you know, these like guys. Like or something pounds. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And um, Jared Leto's and all these guys would just go, hey, hey, what's going on? Like in front of me to my girlfriend, I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, don't worry about it. I'm like, don't fucking tell me to worry, but I'll stuff you through the fucking camera. So he would get this angry energy going. You know what right. I mean? He would find little things to piss people. Oh, totally. So all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'm not even in this fucking movie, but I'm fucking jacked. I'm waiting to crush someone. You know what I mean? So everyone's on edge and be like, okay, action. So people would be like, right. you know, it's not right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was an intense dude. And yeah. And, and, so, so you're on set, like training people. Yeah. But no, actually, no, it was more watching nutrition. Because oh, okay. Brad, from there, he he, had, he was with the team of Irish boxers, because he had to learn how to really work his hands right. for, for that, and then also he was going to do snatch, and if you remember, saw snatch, yeah, absolutely. played that that pikey street fighter, so he really had to work his hands, but he had no knowledge of nutrition. What and, a cool and, thing to be a part of. Yeah, it was pretty wild. I mean, the first time I met him, I was just like, hey, I'm trying to help you guys, and the first thing he did is like, go fucking deep. Like he threw me a football. <laughs> I'm like, this is the fucking coolest day ever. <laughs> That is pre that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then you've worked with uh, The Rock and Mickey Rourke. Yeah, and yeah, what, yeah. What were you able to help The Rock with the most, you think? Um, well, his whole thing. Because he came to you a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. well, I knew him. It was funny. He When I ran gold way back when, as you know, all the wrestlers would make Venice there, their oh, stop. Yeah. Stone Cold would come oh, in yeah. and I mean, Kane and The Undertaker. Everyone. And they would stay there because they crazy. would have to go to Anaheim, back to L.A., San Diego, back to L.A., uh, you know, Sacramento back to LA, San Francisco. So they would they would stay in Venice for like two weeks. They'd all get hotel rooms or whatever. You know, half the time these guys would just crash on my fucking couch and trash my place. But it was funny. Yeah. Was he okay with his diet and stuff no. like that, or what was he? No, it's the typical wrestling mentality. You know what I mean? Right. Eat as much calories and drink as much. You right. Know? Right. Yeah. That's all they did. So it went. He looks so much different now. Yeah. Guess. When when he first saw me, you know, he would be like, you know, because I met him and I was going through this whole kind of transformation myself because. I learned how to eat, I learned proper nutrition, and, and I learned, you know, time cardio, heart rate, monitoring, all this other shit to, I mean, exercise is science. Back then it was just, let's eat as much and let's lift as much and we'll look good. But now it's a fucking science, you know what I mean? Everything's right. time, nutrition. Yeah, you um, do a great job yourself of okay. balancing stuff out, because like, you'll have some drinks, you'll, oh, yeah. you'll eat a cheeseburger, Yeah, yeah. but you put in the work yeah. to keep the weight off, right? Yeah, totally. It's a lifestyle. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, I mean, there's guys out there, I'm sure you'll interview guys that are just dedicated. And, right. And that's good for them, but I like they, to have they, a life. They live out of their Tupperware. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, and that's not for me. So you, you've worked with a lot of people over the years, and, and uh, how old are you? I'm 51. 51. 55. Show us, show us the abs there. Uh, show this, us the, show it's us it's the kind biscuits. of sucky, because, uh, I mean, I just, I just got up. So. That's not bad for 51. <laughs> <laughs> and that's... It's not not the same as that. I'm more as a work in progress all the time. <laughs> I saw the orange cones around your belly. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a little doughy. Yeah, but you're a strong fucker. 
used to be. I'm falling apart. I'm getting old and fat. No way. <laughs> you know, what do you think of uh, today's uh, youth? You know, what do you think of today's uh, the millennials? You know, uh, I, just I mean, of... it's always like, my, I'm sure my dad blamed. It was like, oh, these young yeah, kids right, don't know what the fuck yeah. it is. So it's not my turn to be the old guy and say, these young guys don't know what the fuck it is. But for me, and I'll just relate my experiences. I mean, to be a fitness guy, I had to go to Joe Eater. I had to stand in front of people. I had to take my shirt off, and I had to show this is what it is. This this is how I want to work. I had to hustle. You had to go places. But these fucking kids, they just post pictures of whatever right. and like like me, and they keep going out there like me, like me, like me. And it's it seems like there was never any hard work involved. Right. Like I look at all these fitness guys. I mean, okay, you're in shape and and you do things well, but what have you done? What have you excelled at? I mean, I I had a I had a. I'm not trying to be the Mike Ryan fucking band leader, but I had I went to I had to play it's football, okay. yeah. I had to play hockey, I had to do these things. I earned a scholarship. Yeah. You know what I mean? I played Division One football. I had to do these things to get in name notoriety. And I, I just look at these guys. I'm like, okay, they're in good shape. But what the fuck have they done? What have they done to better themselves? What have they done to inspire other people as when they were younger? Right. And I think this whole uh, millennial culture is just so selfish and self-serving. There's no, there's no camaraderie. I mean, when you go to Gold's Gym, they, they show Pump and Iron. And when you watch Pump and Iron, you see Iron train with Ed Courtney, with Mike Cass, with Ken Watt. And these guys were on competition, but fuck, the camaraderie was there. They, they all, like a, like a football, like a team sport, they were all there pushing, encouraging. Yeah. And you go to the gym today, everyone's got a hoodie and fucking earphones on. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to know no you. No headphones at Super Training Gym. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Allowed, yeah. Oh, okay, you're like the old Joe Gold. Yeah. I can remember that. Joe Gold. <laughs> Joe Gold ran the world, and he yeah. had, there was no music. I mean, it was fucking hardcore, you know. <laughs> there was no music playing ever. You know, it, was, it was nuts. That's, that's pretty crazy. But, yeah. you know, what do you think um, the main issue is with that? I mean, I have my kind of thoughts on it of, uh, you know, people just kind of throwing out posts on social media, but not right. having a backbone or a yeah. Not a backbone is like the wrong word. But, but not no, having like a strong structure behind yeah. them. Well, that's the problem with, with so much information, there's even more misinformation. And right. that's the problem with social media and the net. And anyone can be perceived... Um, uh, authoritarian because okay you you're genetically blessed but right. you know what I mean that doesn't make you a, a know-it-all or have knowledge so, may, so maybe not everybody yeah no that deserves a voice maybe no that's a problem absolutely so you get a million followers and you mm -hmm. have a really strong voice they have a stronger voice than you oh absolutely. somebody who's been doing it 30 40 years yeah I mean I got like seven followers <laughs> <laughs> a big deal you know with with that is is uh, the fact a lot of guys like yourself are so busy actually working yeah. and interacting. Yeah. Um, are you resistant to social media? Are you resistant to some of it? Or have you embraced it? Well, at, at first I was. I'm like, I don't want to be this fucking clown out here right. p having a camera right in front of me. I'm like, okay, my name, blah, 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 blah. But I, it was, I mean, if not, you're a dinosaur. You got to get caught up with the times. You know right. what I mean? So I would just put out tips and tips and tips. It's not a catch on a little bit. But I, I really don't have a, I really don't have an audience. You know what right. I mean? Like you have a massive audience because what you do is impressive and, and people learn and they see. For me, I'm just, I'll, I'll put all the tips and I'll fuck off another day, you know what I mean? There's also a big difference though, between being known like worldwide and being known locally. Yeah. You know, there's also a big difference between being known as a trainer and being known as a trainer that executes a certain way yeah. with certain types of people. And, you know, I think that that's kind of a hard thing. For me, you know, people ask me about business stuff all the time. They ask me about a gym yeah. and my gym is free. So the whole thing is kind of weird, but I don't really know anything about running a gym. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have a, a, a business model for somebody. I don't have a, a plan that I could share with them that would make any sense because I'm, I'm more known on, on a more broad scale and not on a specific one. So like people in Sacramento a lot of times don't even know that we're there. Yeah. So how did you get yourself to be known kind of in this area? Liz, you moved from Massachusetts yeah. a long time ago. How yeah. did you get known in this area? And, and back then it's just, I hate to say it and I hate to be a preacher, but it's just, it's just you lead by example. That's the only fucking way I got my work, and that's the only way to this day I get my referrals. I lead by example. You walk into a gym, it's like you go to a dentist, you're not going to a dentist with no teeth. You walk into a gym, you want to see the fittest fucking guy training the hardest. Yeah. I mean, that's my belief. That's my belief system, and that's why I get like the Brad Pitts, the Edward Norton, the Rocks, the Mickey Rocks. And right now, I, this guy actively saw me as uh, Ricky Whittle. There's a show coming out. Sounds like a fake name, by the way. I know, one. totally, yeah. <laughs> hey, Ricky like, Whittle. Where to get Ricky Whittle. From Massachusetts. <laughs> He's a Brit. But there's, there's a show coming on Stars called American Gods, and it's going to be like the next Game of Thrones, and, and he's the lead. So he's this light-skinned, really handsome uh, black guy. 
And he actively found me. He's yeah. like, look, I went online. I wanted to find the best. And every time I, your name just kept popping up, I'm like, well, He that loves was... that uh, motorcycle picture with you with no clothes on. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he was like, that's <laughs> that, my guy. That was the deal. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that closed the deal. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, and when he said, he goes, look, I go to gyms all the time. And he's a fit guy. He goes, but I want to, you know, I want someone that I can say, holy fuck, I can look like this, which is kind of cool. Bringing it back full circle and, and kind of closing out. Uh, what would your message be to some of these young guys that you feel and girls that maybe yeah. are just posting stuff kind of randomly and posting pictures of them looking good, but maybe they don't have a thing behind them? Yeah. Well, I would never discourage anyone to do that. You know what I mean? Because it's motivating to them. Right. You know, post. But it, but if you're a viewer or a fan or a subscriber, make sure they have knowledge, and and see what they do and see what someone else will do. Like, okay, this is how I train my back today. Okay, so you you like this person? Well. See what someone else would do and try and find right. correlating or disagreeing uh, opinions or values. Or, question the knowledge. Yeah, right. Definitely question the knowledge. But yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, fitness is cool these days. Back then it was just, I mean, especially in the 80s, 70s, no one went to the gyms, 80s people were having fun in the gyms. But now everyone's in the gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? CrossFit is, I'm not a huge fan of it because I think it can be damaging. But it's it, it gets people motivated uh, more than anything. You know? Yeah. And then... You look pretty damaged, I gotta say. I am damaged. I'm so fucking <laughs> insides of insides of train. That's right? what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I'm a mess. <laughs> All right, guys. This is Mike Ryan. Where can people find you? What's your Instagram and uh, what yeah. else you want to plug? Website. Uh, what is it? Uh, Mike underscore Ryan underscore Celebrity Trainer. That's my Instagram. Facebook. Uh, Mike Ryan Venice. You can probably find me at. So, yeah, I don't even fucking tweet. I'm terrible. Fifty-one years old, twenty-inch guns. Yeah. Still looking impressive as a motherfucker. Yeah. Frank, there's never a weakness. Catch you guys later. Cheers.